Not a chance in the world. After just one win in their final five games, Blackburn have bottled the playoffs. And after an impressive season, they are going to be staying in the championship on goal difference. Honestly, I feel bad for Blackburn fans. They've seen their arch rivals in Burnley have one of the all-time championship seasons. And it feels wrong to see a club with such history like Blackburn dwindling in the championship. So today, we're going to give the Rovers something to smile about as we take them over and re- build Blackburn. So here is our default starting 11 with Blackburn. There's a few changes I want to make, but we've been kind of blessed where Blackburn have a young core of talent. And I really want to harness this young core of talent and make them key pillars in this rebuild. But our key objective here in season one is to get promoted to the Premier League. Over a decade ago, Blackburn narrowly missed out on a Polish wonder kid that later turned out to be Robert Lewandowski. We're not letting history repeat itself. One of the top Polish wonder kids currently Jacob Kaminski is joining us here from VFL Wolfsburg but we do have our first player departure of the Mr. Rebuild era as it is going to be Daniel Ayala off to Tulu for 1.2 million pounds and we're also going to be selling Ryan Hedges for 2 million pounds our first loan move as well the right back Joe Rankin Costello off to Las Palmas and we are officially saying goodbye to Sam Gallagher who we have sold to the Belgian league for 1.7 mil and we're going to make an upgrade in in the midfield here it is the former Fulham center midfielder Matt O'Reilly who's been applying his trade under my fellow Australian and Postacoglu at Celtic Park he's jumping from one Aussie to another but I'm hoping Matt O'Reilly can be a crucial piece on our rise back to glory so we haven't gone absolutely berserk in this first window we've just needed to have done what we needed to do really a new center midfielder a new left winger and a change to the formation balance this side quite a lot and I'm so interested to see whether we have the the chops to get Blackburn up to the Prem. So far, so good. Just keep it this way, lads. Keep it this way. We're eight points behind Leeds United here on the 1st of January, but this playoff race is so tight. One loss, and we could drop ourselves all the way down to six, so we just need to keep winning games. Also, there were two loan moves that I agreed behind the scenes, which now come into effect. Harry Leonard is off to Casenza, and Garrett is off to BSC Young Boys. Get in there, lads! We are back in the Premier League. We have done it automatically. Honestly, my gut feeling was that we were going to drop into the playoffs and Southampton were going to automatically go off. But we are in the Premier League in season number two alongside Leeds United, which is going to leave Southampton, Norwich, Watford and Luton Town battling it out for that final Premier League spot. Scrolling down the table though and the relegated sides to League One are going to be Rotherham, Blackpool and Wigan. Aston Villa have won the FA Cup. What is going on this season? What is going on? Oh, Southampton got done by Luton in the semi final and Luton Town are going to be joining us in the Premier League. I mean, they are in the playoffs in real life, so I guess it's kind of fair. What a season, though, for Ben Brereton-Diaz. 30 goals this year. He was a key pillar for us, and he's going to be a key pillar for us moving forward. Hopefully, the striker that we have scoring the winning goal in an eventual Champions League final. Also, I've got to give Matt Riley his flowers. Matt O'Reilly, 12 goals, but 13 assists. Both of our signings having belters. We are going to be losing a couple players, though, to their loan spells ending. And then Joe Hilton, we're just letting him walk. But we got Blackburn back into the Premier League. Now let's survive. I don't want to understate how much work we're going to have to do this season if we're even a chance of surviving relegation. This year is the definition of a relegation dogfight. There are certain areas where I want to get wonder kids and there are certain areas where we need quality right now on a cheap. This is exactly what we're doing in between the sticks, which is exactly why we are going to sign Hugo Lloris as our new shot stopper this season for just one million pounds. 83 rated, one million pounds. Is he going to be our goalkeeper for the future? No. But is he going to help us survive relegation? He is a great step towards it. Applying the exact same sentiment here to the centre-back role, it is Victor Lindelof, who we picked up on an absolute cheat. He only had 12 months remaining on his contract at Man United, so we've signed the sweep. A massive addition to our attack as well. It's Felipe Anderson, a signing I'm sure you guys probably didn't expect to see, but Felipe Anderson, if this guy can have like 10 15 goal contributions across the whole season. That will go a long way to us stay, staying up in the top flight. And whilst I want to keep bringing in players that are going to help us survive, we need to get our finances up. So we're going to sell Bradley Dak here. It's not crazy money, but it's money nonetheless. I am absolutely over the moon about this one. It is another quality pickup here to our midfield. Finally, sort of a younger player. It's going to be the Belgian defensive midfielder, Albert Sambi Lekonga, joining
joining us here from Arsenal. We did pay 13 million pounds for his services. A nice chunk of change in here as we get 1.4 million pounds for Smoditz. And our shot stopper Thomas Kaminsky is off to Sevilla. Another younger upgrade in to the side here as we bring the Scottish left back, Josh Dowie, get to the club here from Hellas Verona. Very excited to see what this young fella can do. Not gonna lie, lads, I'm really proud of the transfer window we've had. I am really proud. We have done everything in our power to give ourselves the best shot possible of staying up here in the Premier League. Let's go check in in January and see how our mission is coming along. But lads, if you are enjoying this rebuild and you aren't already subscribed, make sure you bloody Scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. We are on the push towards 500,000 subscribers. So everyone either joins, the mission helps out. This is not what we wanted though. Literally a week after this, we have suffered a terrible injury without starting right back. Callum Britton breaking his tibia. That is not fun. He's out for the whole season, essentially. So we need an emergency free agent signing. Matt Doherty is on the free agents list. We need him to come out of obscurity, out of free agency, and save us this year. Whatever you want, Doherty, you'll have it. Welcome to Blackbird, our emergency right back, Matt Doherty. Not gonna lie, that is a pretty nice upgrade. We are alive and we are kicking, ladies and gentlemen. Currently on 24 points, we are nine points clear of our rivals in Burnley. This is huge. We're not safe yet, but we have had a great start to the season. We did agree a short loan move though for Daniel Pike, who's off to West Brom for the second half of the season. But after renewing a lot of contracts, we do not have much money to make improvements here in the second half of the season. So we're going to have to bank on what we've already done to stay up in the press. Oh, that is such a relief, lads. That is such a relief. We have comfortably survived. That's all I wanted. 16 points clear of Brentford who go down alongside Fulham and Luton Town. But we have survived our first season in the Prem with Blackburn. Hopefully, we're here to stay. You know what? Screw hopefully. I'm saying, I'm making sure that we are here to stay. But scrolling up the table, it is going to be Man City narrowly edging out Arsenal to win a Premier League title. Almost sounds like real life. What is going on in the FA Cup in this rebuild? Aston Villa, now Nottingham Forest. Meanwhile, it's Man City winning the Carabao Cup. PSG take down City to win the Champions League. League. Fair play, AZ Alkmaar win in the Europa, and PSV Eindhoven win the Conference League. Brereton Diaz is a superstar. 16 goals for him, plus four growth again. He is quickly turning into a superstar. And what did I say, lads? If Felipe Anderson could get 10, 15 goal contributions this year, it would go, did I say 10 or did I say 15, 20? Regardless, he gets 11 goal contributions and we survive comfortably. The big question though, ladies and gentlemen, is whether we can do it all again in season three and survive. I am selling Brereton Diaz. I am, I'm not just gonna reject this offer. I'm blocking offers for him. I feel like I'm making a little bit of a habit of signing former Tottenham players. I mean, we've got Doherty, we've got Hugo Lloris. Now we've got Jed Spence, but he is our right back for the future. I wanna give him more game time. And I think he's gonna slot perfectly into our side. Gonna be parting ways though with Harry Pickering, who's off to FC Porto, along with Jack Vale, who's off to the Turkish League. I've been trying to get a loan move for Tyrese Dolan for the past three years. Finally, we get one. And it's the Southampton. The clean out continues though. After his broken tibia, he kind of just fell down the ranks. He's now our four string right wing back. So I felt it was the right thing to do by getting Britain some game time at Montpellier. Adam Wharton off on a one year loan to Mitterland. And the wonder kid who we've used in a few rebuilds in the past, Ashley Phillips, finally get a loan for him. It is a huge addition to the defense though. I am, I am chuffed about this one. Kevin Danso is our center back of the future as we sign the Austrian center half here from RC Lens. Definitely a stark contrast in this transfer window compared to last year, but we've added additions where we needed to. Probably gonna have to make some big ones next year, but for right now, we have a really balanced side, very balanced overalls, and a very balanced mix between youth and experience. I said it last year, but I'm genuinely proud of the side that we're building. No, nah, you're taking the piss. You are taking the piss. Oh my God. Forget about second season syndrome and trying to survive relegation. We're trying to get ourselves a Champions League spot. Oh my God. We're only three points off the league title. Nah, okay. This could be a special season. This could be a Leicester City type season. We have decided to part company though with Dominic Heim, who is off to Crystal Palace for three and a half million pounds. And we're going to use that money to pick up the young striker here, Mohamed Sanko, who we have signed for four million pounds from Stuttgart. A great backup striker and a great striker for the future. Gonna be telling James Brown though to pack his bag.
Jags as he's off to Huddersfield. It's the second half of the season slump from us, but we might have qualified for the conference league. Regardless, regardless, we have done phenomenally better than I even expected in my wildest dreams. Who got relegated though? The relegated sides, Watford, Bournemouth, and Brighton. But Burnley have hung on by the skin of their teeth every season. Liverpool restore a bit of normality in the FA Cup. And Arsenal win the Carabao Cup. Bayern Munich win the Champions League. The Europa League goes to Cristiano Ronaldo's sporting. And it's Bill Bow taking down Rangers to win the Conference League. Rumor has it, Lupe Fiasco wrote that song Superstar about Ben Brereton Diaz. Because if you are what you say you are, a superstar. Also, can we just take a moment to acknowledge Felipe Anderson. I signed him as like a one-year player. And he continues to grow. And he had 27, no, 20, how many? 26 goal contributions this year. We're definitely going to need to upgrade the goalkeeper position next year, though, because Lloris is rapidly declining. We said we wanted to upgrade in between the sticks and upgrade on Hugo Lloris. And we've gone for another Frenchman here. It's Yvan Diouf who is joining us here from Rems. And it is time for us to say goodbye to Victor Lindelof. It has been two amazing years. But it's time for us to move forward. I'm glad we could send him to his former club in Villarreal. Ain't no surprise that we wanted to replace and upgrade Lindelof with an absolute stud of a signing. We're going to sign the Spaniard, Ander Gutierrez, 84 overall at 21 years of age. This dude is our center half for the remainder of the rebuild, surely. This dude looks like he is a just a stud. Take a shot every time I call somebody a stud. Another player departure here, though. Joe Rankin Costello off to Borussia Mönchengladbach. And we have bagged ourselves an absolute monster here in the midfield. It is going to be the Ecuadorian defensive midfielder, Moises Caicedo, who is going to join us from championship side Brighton. We pay 33.5 million pounds for him. You cannot tell me that this team isn't unbelievable. Last year, it felt like that when we were sitting in the top four, it felt like we didn't necessarily need to be there and that we didn't belong there. But this year, European football feels like more of a right. We've got to push. We have got to push. I don't want top six. I want top four. I want champ. I want to hear the champions next year. I want that so bad. Also, if you wait for ever want someone to actually like physically perform the anthem, that was my audition. That is so frustrating, lads. We are just not good enough right now. Here I was, so high on my own supply about getting top four. We finished seven. That is unacceptable. That is... We weren't even close to the top four, man. We need to do some serious work next season and make some hard calls. All right, we might have had a bad season in our eyes, but at least we weren't Burnley. Burnley are going down. Tottenham winning the FA Cup and Liverpool win the Carabao Cup. PSG are just racking up the Champions League titles. Lazio winning all Italian Europa League. Meanwhile, it's Sevilla winning the Conference League. Despite our disappointing season, it's still a good season for some of our key players. Brereton Diaz getting himself 22 goals, Kaminsky 15, 13 goal contributions for Philippe Anderson, but we're going to have to go in for a star right winger next year because he's dropping dramatically. We are going to be letting the contracts expire here for Daniel Butterworth and Sam Barnes and saying goodbye to Hugo Lloris and Matt Doherty. Thank you for your service, gents. Especially Hugo Lloris. I don't think we get through those first two Premier League seasons without him. This season's objective on the transfer market is so straightforward for me. The one part of our squad where we lack a world-class player is the right wing position. So we're selling Felipe Anderson. An absolute stud for us in this series, but it's time to move on. We've sent him to Newcastle, and I want someone that is going to take us from edge of the top four to a Premier League title contender. Like, I want a real statement signing. These are the four names we have on the shortlist. Saka, Rodrigo, Anthony, and Sancho. Now, Rodrigo is definitely out of our price range. Saka, though, we can get him potentially a little bit cheaper. Let's go in and see if we can pull off a miracle transfer. Not going to lie, I'm kind of expecting to get walked out of the room here by Arteta. But I'm going to offer £88 million pounds here for Saka. I might not even be able to afford the wages. Let's just see if we can make it happen. Yeah, he's laughed us out of the room. Damn it. All right, priority number two is Anthony. He's only got 12 months remaining on his contract. So the chief executive says we can get him for 61.1 million pounds, which would be just ridiculous. Man United, oh my God. All right, let's get rid of the 10% sell-on clause. 
I want to steal. 61 aid is accepted. Nah, 10 hog, you kidding. That is a game-changing signing. We've weakened one of our Premier League rivals, and we have improved our squad dramatically. I bet you didn't expect this when you loaded up YouTube today. Anthony signing for Blackburn. That is... I'm, I'm stoked. I am all over them. I am over the moon right now. To be fully transparent, I planned on splashing our entire transfer budget on a new right winger. So I've decided to use the money left over wisely and invest in a new backup goalkeeper now that we have lost Hugo Lloris. We've got Cameron Kelleher here from Liverpool. This team just looks sick. Like this attack, this front three of every Premier League team, every Conference League team should be on alert this year because we're going to score goals for fun. And hopefully at this end of the field, we can keep them out for fun. But we are in the Conference League this year. There is no reason, in my opinion, why we can't win the whole thing. That has got to be our goal. So far, so good. But we need to make sure we're in this same position, if not higher, come the end of January, come match day 38. No real surprises. We have absolutely thumped the competition, though, in the Conference League. And we're through to, what, the round of 32, the preliminary, like the round of 16. Whatever it ends up being, we're through. There is no need for us to go crazy here in the transfer window. We don't have a stupid amount of money either, so I'm not going to go out and sell somebody to buy somebody. I'm just going to use what we have and get an upgrade at the center midfield role as we sign Alan Campbell from Luton Town. We are going to be losing a player, though, to a free transfer. I'm not too devastated about it, but it's Dylan Makande who is headed to Besiktas on a free next year. Blackburn's in the Champions League. Yes, lads, this is so good. We end up finishing, like, comfortably within the top four. Man City, almost Centurions, almost Invincibles. Not worried about them, though, because we're going to be playing Champions League footy. All right, who got relegated? I still haven't seen Man United. Oh, Man United, please, please, please. Oh my God, Man United came 19th. Man United have been relegated. Oh my God. See what happens when we take Anthony from them? That is ridiculous. Regardless though, taking a look around the other leagues, it is Crystal Palace who won the FA Cup. We had a good crack to it this year, but I don't know if I should have shown this. We lost to Burnley, our rivals in the quarterfinals. Man United, despite getting relegated, are going to be playing European football next year as they won the Carabao Cup. Man City won the Champions League. Tottenham continue their trophy run in this video by winning the Europa League. And unfortunately, we have not won the Conference League. We went out embarrassingly in the round of 16 after losing to Anderlecht. We thought Ben Burton Diaz was a superstar before this year. Well, he's just cemented himself. 41 goals. 41 goals for the Chilean slash Englishman. That is unbloody believable. Unbelievable. Also, I mean, I told you guys. I told you guys. I'm a prophet. The front three. Anthony's got 17 goals. Kaminsky's got 17 goals. Deadly. Again, though, I am letting the contracts of a couple players expire. McCandy's off on a free, and then Harlock and Piers are going to be going to free agency. Bring on season six, though, ladies and gentlemen, because Blackburn Rovers are back in the Champions League. I'm not going to lie, lads. Casado has been nothing but disappointing in this team. He's not growing. He's not performing too well. We need a world-class defensive midfielder, which is why we're going to sign the Argentine defensive midfielder Varea from RC Lens, 85 rated, and we drop a cool 48.5 mil on him. I'm trying to give us the best chance possible of winning a Champions League this year. We may as well have world-class talent on our backups as our backups. So Raheem the Dream Sterling is going to be joining us on a quite, it's quite a pickup, 27.8 mil. I'm happy with that. We're also adding a backup left back to the squad in Sam McCallum, who's going to join us here from Parma. And just like Raheem Sterling, it is another player that could start in almost every other team in the world. But he's going to be our backup center back, Axel Dezasi here, joining us from Getafe. I didn't want to make this move, lads. Buckley wanted out, though. John Buckley, cousin of the Master Bucks. It is Aston Villa who are going to get his services. To say I'm excited about this season would be an understatement. We're in the Champions League for the first time, and we have got a quality football side here at Blackburn. Excited to see what we can do. Can we go on a deep Champions League run? That is my expectation. However, we have got a really balanced group here, I would say, in the Champions League. It's Wolfsburg, Nice, and Dinamo Zagreb. There's no walkovers in this group. 
We're just going to have to focus on every game, one game at a time, if we want to get to the knockout rounds. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Oh, my God. Look at the points. Everybody on nine points, and we go through on gold differential. Nah, I told you this group was going to be even. I told you this group was going to be even. Oh, my God. I'm glad we're through to the round of 16, but I'm almost in shock. Round of 16, we're taking on Inter Milan, who are in the semifinals in real life. Very interested to see how we're going to hold up against them. Man, we need to get our act together, though, in the Premier League. We are starting to lag behind. Wait! I only just clocked on the Crystal Palace are coming first. Chris, what is going on this season? Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our first Champions League run with Blackburn. Round of 16, straight into it here at Ewood Park, taking on Inter Milan, who have got a quality team. Just is someone that I almost signed a few years ago instead of Danso, but here we go. Full strength side on the park, at home, and we go down 1-0 in the first leg. Are you kidding me? Serge Nabry of all players. It's time. I'm not feeling good, lads. I am not feeling good. Second leg at the San Siro. And we have to overturn this 1-0 deficit. Our front three score goals for fun. We're going to need them to do that here at the San Siro. Come on, Blackburn. Come on, Blackburn. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Brereton Diaz has scored four goals. He took what I said personally. Brereton Diaz has scored four goals on the road, and we are through to the Champions League quarterfinals. That is one of the all-time Champions League performances. Oh my god. I am I am in shock, lads. I am almost I am in shock. Brereton Diaz is him. So here we are going from one juggernaut of Italian football to another as we have Juventus in the quarters. Full strength starting 11 on the park here. Let's not make it tough for ourselves. Let's not be behind in this first leg. Juventus again, just like Inter have an unbelievable side. Come on, Blackburn. Come on, Blackburn. It's two all. I can live with that. But it's going to have everything to play for in this second leg in Turin. We have proven we know how to get it done on the road in Italy. But we need a, we can't be relying on Brereton to get us four goals again. Everybody else needs to step up here. This is for a spot in the semi-finals of the Champions League. And we are through. Kaminsky decides that he wants to be the man to step up. Kaminsky gets a brace. We're back into the big time. We're into the final four. God, this is terrifying, man. This is terrifying. Two German teams, one French, one English remain. And we've got the French one. It's PSG. Lord, give me strength. Oh, first legs on the road at the Parc du Prince, traveling to the French capital here. Mbappe still playing for them. They've got Leon Goretzka, Marquinhos, Donnarumma. Come on, Anthony, you, your other two front three partners have been showing up. Please, Anthony, you can show up this game. Do it for us, brother. On the road, we win 3-1. It's Brereton Diaz with a brace and Danso getting the defensive goal. We are 3-1 up. We come from 1-0 behind as well. I'm over the moon with that. We are without Matt O'Reilly here for the second leg. Our captain has been suspended. So we've got to just hold on here. We've got the two-goal lead. Varela goes to center mid. Travis comes in and retains the captain armband. Oh, man, we're at home. Just don't bottle it. Just play a safe game of football. Just get a draw. Just get ourselves through to a Champions League final. My God. Kaminsky in the 80th minute secures our spot in the Champions League final. It would have been going extra time otherwise. That is a massive sigh of relief. And now we're going to be facing either Dortmund or Leipzig in the Champions League final. And we are going to be facing Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League final. Ironically, when you're watching this video, if you're watching it like on the day it's uploaded, I am in Dortmund right now. I am probably, when this video is uploaded, at the Dortmund versus Borussia Mönchengladbach game in the Bundesliga in Dortmund. So it's a bit of a clash right now. But when I'm putting my alliances to the side, we're going to take them down and get Blackburn a Champions League title. Taking a look around the grounds, Atalanta win the Europa. Leo win the Conference League. We have had a shocking second half of the season and missed out on Champions League football 
by one point. One point. We finished fifth. No, are you kidding me? Fifth. That top five, that top six really is just so damn tight. Oh my god, Watford, Burnley, Fulham all relegated. Liverpool have won the FA Cup and Man City win the Carabao Cup, but we have got so much more pressure on us now to win this Champions League title. Got to get our head right though. We've got a massive game here, the biggest game of all. It is the Champions League final. Taking a look at the stats though, Brereton Diaz and Kaminsky both with 26 goals this year, goals this year which is unbelievable. What a year from both of them. I am so excited to use both of them in the Champions League final. Oh God, oh my God, they're passing it around like crazy to start this game. Feed it, yes, we've sucked in the left back there. It's Anthony, what can he do? Anthony, all oh, the skills. Anthony, oh, I had to go for the shot there. We end up forcing a really good save out of Paulo Lopez. Loves his skills. Oh my God, finish this. No, that is unbelievable. Anthony with the skills and Kaminsky. He doesn't want to hug us, so I'm just going to go celebrate here with Kaminsky. What a goal to open the Champions League final. Anthony. Oh, brilliantly fed there. In behind, it's Brereton Diaz at the near post. And Brereton Diaz, that's why you train your shooting stats, ladies and gentlemen. He was in acres of space, and he has belted that one past Paulo Lopez to double our advantage. We needed that, man. Look at that run. We needed that. Dortmund was starting to find their way into the game. And that is a rocket of a finish. Questionable goalkeeping, though, from Paulo Lopez. Oh, we made the tackle, and it falls right back to them. And they've hit... I thought they found the top corner, I'm not going to lie. They've tried to dink the keeper, and it's gone out for a goal kick. Thank the Lord for that. Fending against Ivanov. Nah, we're falling asleep, lads. What a save to you. Don't let him get a follow-up. What a challenge, Gutierrez. Dortmund have been throwing everything at us here in this second half, and it has been terrifying to defend against. Wait, what? Brereton Diaz is injured. Oh, it's saved by Duf. I hope Brereton Diaz doesn't have to go off. Kaminsky to take the corner here. Kaminsky, that's a rocket in to Vareya, who hits the crossbar. Follow up. He wins that, and it's so much power behind it that Paulo Lopez deflects it into the back of the net. And that is surely going to be a Champions League title here for us at Blackburn. There we go, lads. That scoreline did not reflect that game at all. That could have easily been 3 all or 2 all, but... I'm happy it finished the way it did because we have won ourselves a Champions League title here with Blackburn Rovers. And it is going to be our centre midfield maestro, the man we signed whilst we were still in the championship, Matt O'Reilly, to lift the trophy and officially crown Blackburn as Champions League winners. Lads, if you enjoyed today's Blackburn rebuild, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.